at uh, Sapphire, and behind us we are in the Global Communications Center, this is Ground Zero, Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of Sapphire now. We are here inside the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and uh, we have the executive committee behind us talking to all the analysts, it's off the record. We were streaming the press conference earlier and the C key CEO press conferences, uh, but this one's kind of off the record. We're hearing everything. Guys, we're hearing everything. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. <laughs> guys, Thank so you. introduce yourselves yeah. and, and, um, and what you guys want to yeah. talk about. Yeah, my name is Tony McCoy. I am uh, with EMC, and I uh, manage our alliances for the Americas. Uh, everything that we do with systems integrators, outsourcers, service providers, and uh, here to talk about the, uh, the great partnership we have with CSC. Yeah, David Parsons. I look after our Vice President of Global Alliances and Chief Marketing Officer, and uh, here to talk about our longstanding relationship with uh, SAP uh, on the application side, uh, our new banking announcement, and the work we do with EMC and the IT transformation. Uh, space. So the big trend, obviously, here is that the, the portfolio across, across the lines of business in SAP is, is, is pretty much on track, going back three years. Mobility analytics, no major change, um, but cloud is obviously is morphing. It's up in the air, pun intended. Um, and because you have HANA, this accelerates the conversation now around multiple market dimensions, existing SAP customers, new business, and then kind of like this conversion infrastructure, you know, private mm -hmm. cloud meets hybrid cloud. So guys, that's accelerating a lot of confusion, but yet opportunity in the marketplace. So David, talk about what you're seeing in the marketplace, because if people want one throat to choke, but at the same time, they need multi-vendor, because more things are being integrated, not necessarily as one product, but you need to have testing and certification, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the delivery right. and the integration. So what, what, what do you see around that, the key well, trends? I'll answer from two dimensions. One is just CSC in general. We're a big SAP shop, uh, human capital management, financial services. And when you look at what we're doing around the new platform and technology, uh, is, is looking to take and modernize our SAP implementation and host it in an environment, because we're not just an SAP shop. You know, we, have, we have a lot of their suite. But when we look at in CSC as an internal case and we look at the market, uh, what, what we're seeing is the need for a, a diverse horizontal platform that will allow us to create an as-a-service delivery model at the infrastructure layer, uh, and then create uh, on HANA, using the big data approach, unique use case scenarios by vertical almost, that, that are very outcome oriented around the kind of insights that the clients want to produce with, with the data. So we're, we're really eating our own there in terms of our internal use case and we're then applying that broadly. And a big part of our partnership with, with EMC and the VCE community is around taking their technology platforms, our expertise in IT infrastructure and transformation, and then creating that next generation platform to go host these new uh, next-gen applications as well as the apps that are modernized to support that environment. So I have to, I have to kind of bring up the yeah. IT as a service, because it's just yeah. a great, I just love it, right? IT as a service, and, and agile, those are buzzwords out in the marketplace, yeah. and, and, and they mean something now, so let's let's break that down. You have different levels of service. You have the agile, I want to load, deploy some applications that's on top of the stack, I want some mobile, I want some analytics, that's great, and it's, it's good business to do there. But some IT as a service can take months to roll out, which was, you know, years in the past. Um, so that no high end where VCE's been playing has been really making a lot of strides on the time to value. So as you guys get into the, on, on the delivery side, I, that is a service, there's some integration involved. Can you talk about how CIOs look at that particular piece of the business and what's different now than it was you know, just five years ago? Let me have Tony weigh in and then I'll compliment that. You wanna? Yeah, well I think that maybe what's different now than it was a few years ago is that we can actually show some success in the space, right? So what these guys have, and, and it, what we're seeing more and more of, especially with the advent of converged infrastructure and with uh, with some of the capabilities of our uh, of companies like CSE, is we're actually able to deliver on the on the value of agility, or I should say the, the the promise of agility, and actually make some of this stuff happen. Whereas a few years ago we talked a lot about it, but it wasn't we weren't really able to deliver. Um, we also, you know, we see some of the other more consumer-oriented cloud players out there that are that are driving this message of agility, and the uh, and that I think is kind of 
setting expectations um, in the enterprise space that maybe have been a little bit tough to uh, to deliver on. We're really starting to see now with some of the cap capabilities that, that CSC has, building the, their hybrid cloud solutions on vBlock, really starting to actually be able to bring some of these things to life. And uh, I think what they're doing around SAP is a great example of that. Tony, what's different five years ago? Because you know, vBlock's morphed, it's gotten some legs now, yep. the C legs are established. Um, we have great testimonials. We, we talk to on the cube all the time. Yeah. It's just, it seems like a secret, right? Like it's like you think VBlock's a secret? Well, no, not anymore. But yeah. it's the word's getting out there. But you know, VBlock people are like realizing, hey, I can actually roll this out. So yeah. it is a service in a way. So it fits that bill. It's cloud it's in a box. Yeah. And so, yeah. what? What? Why? Well, well, let me ask. Let me build on that because I think from, from the client point of view, when you look at the balance sheet implications of moving to as a service, you know, this notion of capex versus opex is a big deal. And, and one of the things we've been able to do through our partnership and, and our, our combined vision of the software-defined data center. Uh, last week is an example at EMC World, we just launched a new software-defined storage offering, which is a next generation offering from EMC. And we're, we're the Viper? A the Viper. Viper. Yeah. We're, we're a first early mover there. So what we're trying to do is, is take our technology partnerships and, and create, in a shared R&D sense, a three-year roadmap and a set of offerings that really address the client need, both, both financial need and the, and the need for speed and, and agility when it comes to offerings. So we, we are actually building now, and actually have in market now, a storage as a service offering that's all CapEx based. It's pay, and pay you're delivering use. that? Pardon? Are you we're delivering, delivering, delivering that? that? Yes, we just launched that two months ago. And this builds on our hybrid public-private uh, cloud platform, which is all built on the vBlock fabric. Uh, and then when you think about what's going on in the ecosystem around software-defined data centers, you begin to kind of begin, think about this notion of what the next generation infrastructure environment looks like. And for our clients, what CSC's bringing to the table is a set of consulting and advisory services that allows the client to build a roadmap, a journey map, that works for them based upon their financial situation, their business and agility requirements. And, and that's really been the beauty of the partnership as we're showing up together at the client side. Yeah, so yeah. I, obviously the co-innovation yeah. is a key theme for yeah. you guys that's been successful. And the SAP EMC relationship seems to be stronger than ever given that you guys are in the same kind of co-innovation mindset. Yep. What are you guys hearing from customers now? I mean, talk about the customer conversations. Um, what is some of the most consistent, what are you seeing in the broader market conversations that are that, that's repeating itself? In other words, what, what are you hearing most about customers? Are they, you know, fearful? We heard some customers are jumping right in because virtualization's kind of trained the mindset. Like, yeah. hey, you know, we can do some new things with virtualization, but now it's going to a whole nother level. Right. Yeah. What is? What are some of those conversations at that you next level? To your yeah, yeah, just yeah. Yeah. sure. I can. I, I don't think there's uh, there's one conversation we had. I think there, there's several, and some some CIOs are uh, obviously a little bit more comfortable with it than, than others might be, and others are, are, are waiting a little bit more to see how it goes. Uh, what we try to do is is um, in, at least engage in the conversation to make sure that they understand the ability to uh, to virtualize mission critical apps, we use ourselves as a great example. I mean, EMC, you asked me what's different than five years ago. Five, in the past several years, um, you know, five years ago, we didn't have a virtualized instance of SAP. We weren't running vBlock ourselves, and we didn't have the, uh, the capability to deliver on a lot of the things we were talking about. We do today. So we're, uh, across our business, well over 90% virtualized across all of our servers and completely virtualized in SAP. We're running that all on vBlock today, and we're able to really talk to CIOs we, you mean about- EMC? We, EMC, yeah. we've done it. We've uh, you know, we've got our own customer zero in this thing, and we've got a great set of learnings that we can communicate to CIOs who want to engage in the conversation. Some still aren't going to ultimately be 100% comfortable, but by listening to our own experience, and by talking to CSC about some of the experiences they've had with their customers, it really does help to paint the picture that, that there's a reality out there. Yeah, but what do, do you say to, what do you say to all the naysayers? Ah, EMCs are all wet, this Navi block has no traction. How do, you, how do you talk about it? Because there are people who say that. They the say, oh, has no oh traction. VL has no traction. I mean, I guess my, my response to it would be that if you look at it, that... Some people say, not everyone, but I, I know, competition. The, the, the latest Gartner numbers show 57% of the market is, is VBlock. Um, it's in a, uh, the, the company For converged itself. systems. For converged yeah, systems, yeah, I'm sorry, right, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that you know, VCE themselves are on a billion dollar plus run rate um, on an annual basis, and so uh, I would say, you know, if, if they're saying that VCE is, you know, is not real, I think they need to look at some of those statistics. I think it, we kind of define the converged infrastructure space uh, we were a first mover in that marketplace and yeah. have had a ton of success with well, it. You, I mean, 2010, you guys had use cases with Levi Strauss mm -hmm. and a variety of other companies in the past. Mm -hmm. You've yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff, so it's not, it's not new. It's not right. new, it's right. absolutely right. not new. Yeah. And so on, on production, that's another thing that people don't really understand, and this is, a, again, another kind of, maybe it's FUD from the competition, but you know, where's the production deployments? So where are the production deployments? Well, the production deployments are out there as well, and again, we can point to ourselves, and we have a host of other, other customers that we can point to um, in this space. So. 
you know, it's it is real. Um, we just need to get out there and do a good job of educating yeah. customers yeah. about but, it. But the deployments there are in financial services, they're in insurance, banking. There's plenty of examples in manufacturing. Yeah, this is not this is not some small market. No. These are big right. deals. These, right. these are big deals, big clients. But but to your point, I mean, clients are, are kind of in the crawl walk run sense. They're they're in a crawl to walk state. Mm -hmm. uh, we we are beginning to see mat more you know, massive scale out rollout. Uh, particularly now, as uh, companies are recognizing that you know, this cloud thing is not just a fad, right? The, the idea of public-private hybrid, and, and going back to your earlier point, having a fabric, right, that'll work across multiple mm -hmm. environments. I think that's a big deal. In it fact, is. In fact, I think one of the things that's uh, limiting VCE is the fact that there's a variety of new use cases emerging. Mm -hmm. We had a customer on the cube yesterday. We were talking about SAP and and cloud and Hana, and happened to be a VBlock customer. So I like to dig in. I any chance I get to get some VBlock data? I said, so we know. How, tell me about your VBlock story. He's like, well, you know. I'm paraphrasing now. He basically had a gun to his head, mm -hmm. and you know, data center that was overloaded. He had six months, and they had a lease up. So, a combination of two forces that were really <laughs> problematic. One, do they renew the lease, get a new space, and they were out of space, of uh, physical space. Mm -hmm. So, he essentially reduced his servers licenses by 60% when virtualized with SAP and, and V Block. Yep. Yeah. And he said it was great. Yeah. And, and delivered on time. And six months. He said, I delivered it with VBLOP in six months. Yeah. I mean, that's unheard of in IT. Yeah. You just right. don't hear that. I mean, well, that's uh, a big deal. Well, the other part of this, as you know, in the value prop, is the ability to automate a lot of what required systems administrators and software. So, so there's a lot of that automation, orchestration, management layer that, that gets really commoditized in, yeah. in one sense. And right, and for folks like us in the services business, we recognized uh, several years ago that, look, while that was a big part of the business, we're moving up the stack into the application layer. I mean, so I, I, I yeah. got to ask you on the services yeah. side because the services yeah. business is going through transformation as well. It I is. mean, yeah. I see new services are being enabled. Yeah. We had one guy on here from an SAP customer who's building a mobile app for in, the, in, in Canada for the transit. Turns out they touch all the consumers, right. and what they, they're moving into is essentially to be a, a, like a living social. They're a retail play now. So they've yeah. gone from a mobile app for where to find the bus and the trains to basically having an individual experience for the consumer. So new yeah. new revenue models exploding. So the question. David Hughes says, as you guys get these six months deployments, traditionally that's not good for the consulting business. You know, you want to, you know, it used to be, hey, I want a 20 right. zillion month contract. Right. So now you got six month deployments. So what are you guys doing to get more services? Because there's still demand, there's more work yeah. to do. What well, are those new services? Well, a good example is the announcement we just made with SAP at this conference. We just launched a, a joint initiative in banking for a new secure digital banking system where we're taking the assets, software assets from CSC, the old Hogan assets. Yeah and SAP's banking assets, and we're combining that into one offering. In addition to our business process expertise and leveraging our IT transformation expertise, and what we're, what we're trying to do for the banking community, and this is a great example of CSC moving up the value chain, is for us it's all about the application modernization, workload right sizing, and then the business process by vertical. So in SAP's case, the client value to, bit to banking with CSC is to help clients create new revenue channels, new income channels through multi-channel distribution strategies, exploiting the social mobile architectures that sit today, and delivering our platform as a service. So basically what you're saying is you're generating top line growth and that keeps you in business. We enable, we enable that for the client. You enable the client to make more money, yeah. therefore you keep the business. Well yeah. that and there's a bunch of that's a good business bunch model. of integration work yeah. associated with that. When you think of mobile social and you think of you know, all the infrastructure you need to go support that, and by the way, that infrastructure could be delivered pr public, private, hybrid. There's a lot of orchestration yeah. elements that go. And it's it's in the, in the whole mobile social thing. When you think about you know all the billions of devices that we talk about, and you think about the social communities, and how do you mine? It's a big data play. How do you mine that insight? How do you create the insights? So this is this when we call it's it a secure Nobel. digital platform. That that's that's really where we're focused is bringing all this together in the market. Yeah, you know it's a novel concept, right? For for uh, to create value for your customer and do more integration work is just great, right? That's the business model, right? Um, Tony, I want to ask you the question. Obviously, now that this obviously the business is changing, what's changed? On your guys end, actually dealing with CSC, you know, big firm, big clients, the relationships there, and you know, when you have market transitions, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to kind of, you know, re-dance to the new new music, right? Right. So right. what's, what is that new music? Share with the folks some of the things you guys are doing with CSC. How has the co-innovation partnership evolved? Yeah, you know, it's, I, I think if you look at what we've done together in the last three to four years, um, CSC, the, the relationship with CSC has grown to be the strongest that we have within our within our company and our partner community, it's certainly um, as strong as any. 
Um, they've been, and, and what CSC I think has fundamentally done that, that has been uh, maybe different than, than historically is they now are, are willing to lead with a point of view in the marketplace about what they believe the right solutions are for their customers. And, and as such, CSC was an early launch partner of ours with VCE, one of the first to the table when we, uh, when we did that. You saw that again with, uh, and, and by the way, took that and did something incredibly innovative around BizCloud and their cloud offerings that have uh, continued to ha have been and continue to lead what goes on in the industry. And then what we did uh, together last week with the Software Defined Data Center announcements and being an early launch partner with Viper. Uh, the relationship is obviously very, very strong and, and, uh, and very tight. Now, uh, it's, it's led to, I think, uh, one of the things that for us, as a guy that works with, uh, you know, with, with the EMC field all the time, it's led to a great deal of, uh, of trust and cooperation in the field to go out and work with our joint customers together to help find and, and drive incremental opportunities for both of us. Because we're now, because we've, we've formed and, and grown this relationship, we're fundamentally able to bring something to our customers that we wouldn't have been able to had we not done that. So um, it's the strongest relationship we have um, in the marketplace. And I think there's a, a number of examples that, uh, that help to illustrate that. David, you get a lot of traction on Twitter outside of the banking thing, which you just mentioned, mm -hmm. banking uh, uh, innovation you guys right. are doing. Um, you get some good traction on the um, other solutions you guys are doing um, around mobile. What are some of the other things you guys are doing here? Well, the, the big data thing is, is massive, right? It builds on the whole HANA play, but we, we've developed a, a whole business unit that we're incubating that, that allows us to bring the best and brightest minds around all aspects of the big data play, both both from a technology perspective, a platform perspective, and then more importantly, as you, as you know, in the big data area, it's all about vertical use cases yeah. to bring it, you know, to create the relevance. So when you think about our vertical strategy in healthcare, in financial services, in manufacturing, transportation, retail, and then public sector, there's a lot of unique insights that we're able to bring to the client, yeah. uh, you know, building upon this great technology. So that's a big deal. The mobility play is, is, a, is a massive play for all of yeah, them. Security we, too, same thing. Well, yeah. well, cyber is another incubated unit. So this is another part of our EMC partnership. <laughs> we have a, a huge element with RSA. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have the whole you know, pivotal dynamic now, right? Yeah, pivotal and, and when you think about you know, that combined. It's a developer group, market. It is. Wide open yeah, for you. And is. that's going to turbocharge. So you're essentially partnering with SAP at many levels, with infrastructure, obviously cloud. Um, and also the, the technology yeah. level, yeah. and then with Pivotal, yeah. that's a developer angle for you, right? It's application. So think, yeah, think application modernization, modernization enablement. Think of the next generation platform as a service, uh, and, you, and you look at what they've pulled together in terms of you know, with the GE investment, the next generation of industrial applications. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's an exciting area, right? Internet of things. Internet of things, <laughs> yeah. And so we, we see uh, significant potential yeah. there. That's an exciting time. I mean, yeah. I, I got to ask you guys just on a personal level and asking everyone all week, um, you know, relative to your relationship and SAP and kind of the world of IT and tech, what is the most amazing thing that you've seen in, in, in the business that's you, that you say, wow, that's amazing? What is the most amazing yeah. thing that you've seen? That's just different. this week or just in general? This week or in general? Yeah, well, I think could be levels of yeah, amazingness. Well, I think, amazing yeah, this yeah, week yeah, and it, amazing. Well the, well, the amazingness for me is the Internet of Things, right? When you, when you think about this notion of millions of sensors, right? And, and you think about, you know, we had a guy here from McLaren today. I don't know if you were here for the keynote, but you know, the CEO, chairman of McLaren, was here. And he was talking about the fact that a, a simple race car, right, has you know thousands, tens of thousands of sensors on it, and all that data is processed in real time. And it's actually, it was billions of, billions of uh, inputs, right? Billions of bytes of data. And how, in, in two race cars, uh, it was double the population of the world, right? In terms of the, if you The took, data acquisition. The data acquisition. Yeah. Yeah, real time data ingestion mm -hmm. with insights and feedback. And when you look at that as a microcosm of the world we're going to live in, when you think about GE's business and Johnson Controls and any any company that's got the ability to harness and ingest that data, the fact that we've got the compute technology and platforms now to be able to, to do that and then to create the business insights, the rules and policies to make it useful real time, blows me away. You know, Tony, what about well, you? I, I would, you know, I won't just simply agree because then it, but, but yeah, I do. So, I mean, say check, I'll add more amazing. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. absolutely, uh, yeah. it's incredible. I, I would also say that it's. Um, uh, the rate at which we're seeing, because you asked me earlier, you know, what's different now versus five years ago as it relates to the cloud and the as a service economy, the rate at which we're seeing that start to become reality, not just in the in the SMB market, but in the enterprise market, is um, is fundamentally transformational. And I think we're all we're all feeling it, we're all seeing it. I don't mean just around the SAP environment; I mean in general. Um, and I, I think we all knew that it's going to happen, and we've uh, we've been kind of waiting for it to happen. The rate at which it seems to be happening 
is um, is is amazing, if you will, and something that I think we all better get used to. You know, just a comment on David point and, and your point, Tony. Is that I think what's most amazing to me is two things. One is the inflection point that we're in. From at least I'm I'm 47 years old, so I can remember the days when the you know the PC revolution was seen. That's my generation, and uh, then client server came. Everyone talks about oh we're a client server. I think it's, this is an impact that's going to double both them individually, but if you combine the PC revolution and client server together, mm -hmm. that's the power of the, of the neutron bomb that's hitting today, which yeah. is, and it's happening fast. So that's kind of one amazing thing that I'm seeing, uh, kind of that come around the corner. But to the race car example, to me, the other amazing thing that I, uh, that I think and I see is that if you think about that race car, and this is going to relate to something as you say about your business opportunity, is that if that's a business, the race car is a company. Yes. We can yes. now, for the first time in the history yep. of business in the world, measure everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything. That's exactly right. Google I.O., they're measuring the steps of people that yeah. they're taking. Mm -hmm. So imagine what you can do and what that's going to do to the value chains in the companies. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. New you know, models, new. Yeah. I interviewed yeah. Ba uh, Brian Gallagher at EMC World, who's okay. running the yeah. Symmetrics group, and mm -hmm. you know he's quote under the, he's running the group that's quote dying, right? You know, Symmetrics is the, <laughs> the old drives, <laughs> right? Yeah. The tin, the box. He grew ten percent. I mean, he's yeah. growing the right. business. Right. So, right. so the world is changing. It's still going to mean more storage. Right? Running something. Yeah. Right. There'll be more virtualization. So maybe less physical servers, more yeah. horsepower. So again, all the resource issues are, are being discussed. But again, we have this massive tsunami where everything's being measured. So I just, I just think that we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg of the user experiences and the business value conversation. It's right. really, really amazing. And yeah. I think that's going to increase the startup volume. It's going to increase the kind of the big, the big, uh, you know, the Fortune 100s and yeah. Fortune 500s. So yeah. Yeah, it's just unlimited opportunity. Yeah, it really isn't for for, for us in the business you talked about earlier, when you look at the business model transformation, the whole innovator's dilemma dynamic, right, introduced by Clayton Christensen, I mean, in, in our model, outsourcing, consulting, managed services, we've just embraced the commoditization of the platforms, and if it's really a race to the top for us. In some, in some organizations, it's a, race that to are, it's a race to the bottom, yeah. uh, but for us, it's we're, we're embracing what's being done to automate and to create ubiquity. And, and we want to build value on top. And it's really at the app business process layer by industry where we're going to be able to add the most value. You know, and I think as in the transformation, you have yeah. the, you know, the players and the pretenders, right? And to me, my filter is very, very clear when I have to talk to folks on the cube. It's, it's, you know, are you a tech athlete? Are you, are you actually innovating? Or are you just going through the motions? And you can really, in this market, pretty much find that out pretty yeah. quickly. Mm -hmm. you um, so you guys are really doing great work. Really appreciate you coming on the cube, oh, Tony and David. This is the cube. We are here in the Global Communications Center where co-innovation between EMC and CSC is, is thriving and amongst SAP. We are in the, in the Global Communications Center live at Sapphire. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Great.